Good morning. How's everybody today? Are you warm yet? Wow. We are definitely in a Michigan winter right now. Ooh. Anyway, it's good that you're here. Thank you for joining us today for worship. I have just a few announcements. A reminder for folks um, about our giving statements. Um, if we have a good email on file for you, we emailed out the giving statements from last year, so you should have received that. If you have not received it, it's probably either lost in email land somewhere and you need to let us know, or check um, as you leave the gathering space today, there's a little box that has them in there as well. So um, yeah, let us know if you need help with that. Um, also, we did Star Wars, Star Words, not Wars, last week. I have to slow myself down. Star Words last week celebrating Epiphany. And just like the Magi followed the star to Jesus, we have some baskets up here that you can choose a star word for yourself or others if you choose. And that'll be a word to guide you towards Jesus through the whole year. So you're welcome to grab one of those at the end of the service if you like. There's a few baskets over here in the front pew and some on this one as well. And there's plenty. So if you want to share, you're welcome to do so. Uh, also, I just have one other announcement. Um, if you look in your cardinal bulletins on page three, there's an announcement about a pilgrimage uh, trip that's scheduled to go to the Holy Land November 1st through the 11th of this year. I will be going. It's being hosted by um, Pastors Angela and Martin Zimmon, who actually served in Michigan for a little while and ended up in Gettysburg, which is where I met them. And then now I'm here and they're there. But they are hosting a trip. They've lived there for a while um, in their ministries. And they know a lot of people and a lot of the things that are happening around there as far as all the historical things and whatnot. Um, and it should be a really great trip. So if you're interested, let me know or contact the Zimmons, which I, they have their contact info, or I can get that for you. Are there any of your announcements for the good of the cause? All right, and just one more announcement before we do sharing of the piece. Um, we will be singing the first hymn out of our green hymnals, and it'll be, it'll be number 89. It will be on the screen, but all the words are going to be in your book, and we're doing the first four verses. <sighs> that being said, may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you. Please share that peace with one another.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Thank you. Please join with me in prayer. Lord God, source of every blessing, you showed forth your glory and led many to faith by the works of your Son, who brought gladness and salvation to his people. Transform us by the spirit of his love, that we may find our life together in him, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
Our first reading is from Isaiah, chapter 62, verses 1 through 5. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory. And you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no more be termed forsaken and your land shall no more be termed desolate. But you shall be called, my delight is in her, and your land married. For the Lord delights in you, and your land shall be married. For as a young man marries a young woman, so shall your builder marry you. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. The word of the Lord. We will now read responsively from Psalm 36. Your love, O Lord, reaches to the heavens, and your faithfulness to the clouds. How priceless is your love, O God! All people take refuge under the shadow of your wings. For with you is the well of life, and in your light we see light. Our second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 through 11. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were enticed and led astray to idols that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one is speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the discernment of spirits to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are active by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. The word of the Lord. I invite you to please stand as you are able or as you choose. The Holy Gospel according to the second chapter of St. John, beginning with the first verse. Glory to you, O Lord. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. 
When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone, jar, stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to please be seated. The wedding venue was wonderful. It wasn't like the venues or churches in your society with the photo booths where the guests can take pictures of themselves, the chocolate fountains with the little marshmallows on the sticks, the balloons or those glittery lights that shine behind filmy fabric, all of that fancy schmancy glitzy stuff that you see at normal weddings in your time. You see, this venue was in Cana of Galilee, a small little town. And lots of people from all over came to celebrate with the wedding couple and their families. Oh, excuse me, where are my manners? Please forgive me and allow me to introduce myself. I'm Mary, Jesus' mother. I want to tell you about Jesus and how he saved the day at the wedding. You see, saving things is his specialty, as you know but I digress. I'm talking about when he changed water into wine at my request. Let me set the scene for you as I remember it. It was his first miracle or sign described in the Gospel of John. Our family had close connections to the wedding. You know how it is in small towns, right? You know, everyone's either related to everybody else or they're close friends with other people, and everybody knows everybody's business. You're familiar with that? Yeah, I thought so. You see, weddings back then lasted for seven whole days, usually. And that's a lot of partying going on. We celebrated big time. And during that time, those seven days, the brides and the groom's families provided all of the food and all of the wine for all of those people during all of that partying. It's a big deal. And you see, if we were to run out, which we did, the family honor of both the bride and the groom's families would give a really bad impression, and you know what that means in a small town. It lasts forever. And also, we could have been seen as poor or thoughtless hosts, and the guests would have been highly, highly insulted. Dishonor would be brought upon the family name, and with this in mind, as Jesus' mom, I knew what had to be done. So I took charge for a moment. You see, I knew what Jesus was capable of. And I turned to my divine son for help. Shame wasn't going to come upon our family or the bride and the groom's families. And Jesus was just the person slash man, God, to do something about the situation. He was an obedient son, and he did question me about why running out of wine was of our concern, but I didn't answer him. This was just a stall tactic I think he was using. I'm his mom, after all, and he needed to do as I asked him. It was important. And he did what I trusted him to do. And I knew what he could do, that he needed to show people this sign so that they would come to know that he does act on what is needed 
even if it is in his own time. And I'm sure you all have seen that in your lives. He kind of does things his way. So I just hurried things up a little bit, you see, to save the reputation of the wedding families, as well as helping Jesus show a little sign of his power to let people know what's going on. Now, you might remember that the Bible that you read explains how Jesus' earthly ministry had begun at his baptism by John the Baptist in the Gospels of Matthew and Mark. You remember that, right? And then, of course, the wedding at Cana in Galilee occurred over a month later, after Jesus had gathered about half of the disciples, which you can read in the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 43. Now, although Jesus had never performed a miracle in public, it was time for him to demonstrate who he was. You see, it wasn't just about the wine. My motherly instinct told me that this moment was about Jesus showing people the sign that he was more than a human man. He was divine. And in this sign, when he turned the water into wine, he revealed to people his glory. And it was that first sign revealed to the disciples, disciples who just then truly believed in him. Now, don't you think that's the best event to happen during a wedding celebration? I mean, the wedding is, of course, a wonderful event where two people join because of their love for one another. And in our culture, it was also about arranged marriages between families that wanted to unite and become a stronger unit in the community. But there's more. You see, the addition of Jesus showing this sign at the wedding was an amazing revelation of his glory for the disciples. And of course, the servants and the chief steward, the bridegroom, everyone. Now, allow me to be so bold as to say that Jesus could possibly, possibly be the first to make a six-pack a popular item at parties. He did, after all, take six stone water jars filled with water for the Jewish rites of purification, which, by the way, held 20 to 30 gallons of water each, and he turned that six-pack of water into really great wine. Somebody y'all want to party with, I'm sure. You see, Jesus, he didn't hold back. That wine was the very best wine served to the guests, which usually after everyone has drank their fill at the beginning of the partying, and they get a little drunk, and they get a lot drunk, you give the, the lesser wine at the end because people don't notice. But Jesus didn't do that. My son, you see, he wasn't an overachiever or a show-off. No, no, no. It was time for him to show the signs to others of who he was, what his purpose for is for the world, and for all of the people he loves so much. And what this means for all believers is that when we believe in Jesus, he not only saves the reputation of the bride and the bridegroom and their families, but he ultimately saves humanity from the power of sin and death. Oh, it was amazing. And yes, turning the water into wine was a sign was miraculous. And it made everyone's time at the wedding truly memorable. I mean, it did make it into the Bible. Pretty important stuff goes in there. But it also shows that he cares and loves people, that he reveals his glory as one of the signs that points us in his direction. And the fact that the miracle is performed at a wedding is also significant. You see, by his attendance there, Jesus is placing his mark of approval on the marriage covenant, that bond that's so special. And with his miracle, he shows where the blessings in a marriage come from first. Because he shows love first, we learn how, and we share that with each other. You see, love and joy in a wedding ceremony are also representative of Jesus' ministry, who came into this world because of love. Remember, John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son. For God so loved the world, remember that so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. 
In Luke 10, two, chapter 10, Luke chapter 2, verse 10, the angel explains that Jesus has brought joy to all who believe. Important things at a wedding. And Jesus chose to show these signs of his miraculous power at that wedding. And you see, what that means for you and for me is that we can trust Jesus to create an abundance of goodness as well as show us a wonderful, perfect model of faith in our lives. And it wasn't just that great first six-pack of water into wine that made that wedding at Cana so special. It was that first sign that showed all of his power and his majesty, his glory revealed in that sign for the disciples who then believed in him. And you can too, since he performed that sign for all of us way back then and now and into the future, for all eternity. Amen. On behalf of the congregation, uh, church council, and myself, we thank you so much for your generous offerings of your time, talents, and your treasures which support the ministry of our, of our church, for our community, and the church at large. Let us pray. Gracious God, your word made flesh brings harmony to the earth. As we offer ourselves and these your gifts, prepare us to receive the grace and truth you offer at this table and renew in us the song of your salvation. In Jesus Christ, our Savior, amen. In addition to the names on the screen, I'll now take names that you wish to offer up in prayer. Paul. Mary. Okay. 
The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. Your response to God of grace will be hear our prayer. Eternal Father, thank you for all you've allowed into our lives this past year, the good along with the hard things that have reminded us how much we need you and rely on your presence in our lives. We pray for the Holy Spirit will lead us each step of this new year. We ask for your wisdom and strength to make us strong for the road ahead. Give us the ability beyond what we feel able to let your gifts flow freely through us to honor you and shine your light on others. God of grace, your creation reflects your generosity. Bless all farmers, orchard keepers, ranchers, and all who tend the abundance of the land. Protect food and water sources from destruction that all can eat and drink and be satisfied. Provide abundantly for all who are hungry or thirsty, all seeking shelter, and all who seek peace. God of grace. As we enter another year with COVID, we pray for all who have been afflicted with the virus. We put our trust in you to guide us through, take away our fear of living, and heal our nation from all discord. Be with all the healthcare workers and caregivers who work selflessly without complaint to heal the sick. God of grace. Gracious Lord, you have blessed St. John for 150 years. As we look back on our history, we ask that you continue to bless us for many years to come. Guide us as we strive to grow our St. John family, sharing your word to all who want to hear. Help all who hear your word, heed your calling to follow you. God of grace. As Jesus provided generously in a moment of need, provide generous gifts of healing for those in need this day, especially Rosemary, Gary, Bob and Jan, Marvin, Joan, Shirley Lee, Barb, Alyssa, Dave, the family of Marvin Metz, the Finn family, Jim and, Jim and Marcia, Sandy, Dan, the Barron family, the Gabalas family, and all those whose names were mentioned aloud and in our hearts. God of grace, hear our prayer. Merciful God, fear our prayers for your, hear our prayers for your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, who teaches us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now receive the benediction. The God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing, so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit, through Christ Jesus, the Word made flesh. Amen. Please join in singing hymn number 260. We will sing the first two verses, and they will be up on the screen. Mm -hmm. 